See you, rapscallion rascal, you. <laughs> Henry Spinner, I thought you were dead. I'll live on forever. You're the spitting image of your daddy. The spitting image. I knew you were in New Orleans. That's why I sent for you. Who in Hades is that? Pahu. Pahu? Mm -hmm. Pawnee, that means wolf. <laughs> well, why did you send for me? Have you got Dixie back? Dixie? I haven't seen hide nor hair of Dixie for seven years. That's strange. Not ten minutes ago, a man came through that door and was asking questions about Dixie. <laughs> Uncle Henry, I'm not following you. All right. Let's put it this way. Did you find the treasure that your daddy buried? Treasure? Never heard about a treasure until just this moment. You mean my daddy buried it? Yes, I mean he did. The important thing was how to leave instructions for you and your brother, just in case your daddy perished. Now, he came to me with an idea. Yancy, this is very serious. The plates are missing. Plates? What plates? Old Spinner. He was working on the plates for a new $100 greenback. They'd been approved by Washington. They're gone. So is Uncle Henry. I'm going to find the man who had him murdered. And when I do, we'd better talk fast and tell where your plates are. He isn't going to have much time. We string these popcorns all around the outer branches of the tree. No, no, Pa, who knows? You don't eat it now. We string the tree first, and then you eat it later. Oh, Marcia, I said, Pa, who don't seem to understand about Christmas tree. What'd you tell him? I told him I'd explain about Christmas later. It ain't a very noisy language, is it? <laughs> Look, Marcia, I say, if you don't help us with this tree, we'll never get it done. I haven't got much stomach for it, Obadiah. It's the first Christmas we've had at Waverly in seven years. It'll be like old times. If the Colonel could see it, he'd start right in, stirring up a big batch of eggnog and with a big spike in it. All right. Let's get it finished. I'll go up the ladder. You hand me the candy canes and the popcorn. Right, right away. Right away. Thank you, Pahu. Obadiah, bring me some canes. Sir. That sounds like... No, it can't be. Can't be what? Uh, for a moment, I thought it sounded like Dixie. Uh-uh, can't be. It just can't be. Yeah, you're right. You remember the Christmas the senior gave me, Dixie? It was the Christmas of 61. It was 9 o'clock in the morning, and not a creature was stirring except the colonel. Might as well take your present upstairs with you. I'd have given you the pick of the litter. But you'd pick the run anyhow. <laughs> oh, come up here. He's the smallest. Smartest, though. Thank you, senior. It's a wonderful present. What'll I name him? I took a liberty of having Henry Spinner engrave a name tag for him. Called him Dixie. Sort of a nice name. Dixie. Hello, Dixie. It's a wonderful name. You make a good hound. Something else I want to say to you, Yancey. I've got a feeling that this war is going to change things. You'll be going away soon. 
But the good Lord is kind enough to spare you. I want you to come home to Waverly, back here where folks love you. Merry Christmas, son. Merry Christmas, senior. What? Ooh. That is Dixie. Obadiah, get the door. I'm going. I'm coming. Coming, but he's not as bright as he used to be. Ah, well, that's a lot of nonsense. <laughs> Only a silly young colt moves at a full gallop. An old horse walks and covers the whole pasture. Oh, Dixie, you're beautiful. Just beautiful. Uncle Jarrison, I can hardly believe it's you. I'm not your uncle, for which I thank my maker. I came here today for two reasons. One, to give you back this dog. And two, to tell you that I think you're a rude, unprincipled scoundrel, and that I never want to see you again as long as I live. Well, those are pretty harsh words, sir. They're meant to be. May I ask why? Not that I expected to see you the instant you got back to New Orleans. Uncle Jarrison, I didn't even know that but you were But in view of the fact that I've taken care of this, uh, of this meat-eating monster all these years, ever since your family left the scene, I think your conduct was most reprehensible in sending a servant to pick up Dixie without a, without a thank you or a fare thee well. Uncle Jarrison, I didn't send a servant. I sent your servant packing with a crack on the skull, I tell you. When was this? Yesterday, as you well know. Now, Uncle Jarrison, just simmer down. I didn't send a servant for Dixie. I didn't know that you were alive. I didn't even know that he was alive. Is that the truth, boy? Yes, sir, that's the truth. Obadiah, make us a couple of mint juleps. Yes, Judge. And go light on the mint. As usual, Judge. Welcome home, boy. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry I went up in smoke, but the fact is someone posing as your servant did try for the dog. You know, that's strange. I just wonder why. Because... Well, let's sit down. Because Dixie knows where the Colonel buried the Derringer treasure. Derringer treasure? Yes, when Admiral Farragut was downriver, your daddy said to me, Jerison, I think the Yankees are going to take New Orleans. I'm going to get some gold, and I'm going to put it in a safe place. I warned him that gold was scarce, but he went ahead and did it. So he buried it. Thank you. Yeah, everybody was digging holes to put their valuables in. Thank you, Obadiah. Yes, you were there too, Obadiah. Yes, sir. There was me, and there was Dixie, and the Colonel, and Miss Nellie. Miss Nellie? Your brother David's wife. Oh. A sweet and pretty young lady has ever set her foot in this house. And she went with your daddy when he buried that treasure. She and Dixie. Where is she now? Oh, she's probably gone back to her family in Memphis after your brother David was killed in action. Well, the senior did bury that well, treasure. Well, he did all right, because your mother gave him some things to put in that chest. Her treasure, she called them. Mother's treasure. Yes, sir. Where did he bury it? Ask Dixie. Dixie? Well, that's what the colonel said. Ask Dixie, and he'll tell you. The collar. There's nothing there. Ah, uh, if you could only speak. <laughs> on the street. You can't go in there, Dixie. Hounds aren't allowed. Can you take care of me, please, Papa? Hello, Jeremiah. Yancey. Hello, Francie. I thought you were still up river. I was. Just got back. Come on, let me buy you a drink. Wonderful. I didn't really expect to see you until after Christmas. Well, I really came for two reasons. One, who is the man with the uh, spade cufflinks? Your hundred. 
and I'll bump you a hundred. His name's Salisbury. He's a stranger in town, has a guest card. That's all I know. Next question. Well, two. It's been seven years since I've had Christmas at Waverly. I was just wondering if you'd have Christmas dinner with me. Oh, Yancey. Meaning no. Well, meaning I have other plans. I'm so sorry. We can still have the drink. Sure. Someone's hiring cutthroats. Five hundred dollars is more money than he's ever had at one time in his whole life. Pardon me, gentlemen. Pardon me. Who would want to kill you? Not me. Pa who? My dog, Dixie. Oh, Yancey, that's ridiculous. No one would hire a gun to assassinate a dog. Well, someone did. Probably the same man that hired Finn Whistler to kill Henry Spinner. You'd better get this to the police. They'll know where to find me. You know, Uncle Jarrison was probably right. Dixie does know where Senior buried the loot. Someone's afraid you'll show me. Watch oh, Nancy, she's coming. She's coming. Who's coming? Your brother David's wife, Miss Nellie. Get down there and open the Our door. carriage is down front now. Come on. Come on, Dixie. Come on. Miss Nelly, Miss Nelly, welcome back home. Obadiah, it's been a long time. It sure has. Welcome to Waverly, Miss Nelly. Yancey. Yancey Darren, you... you look so much like David. If I'd have known you anywhere. <laughs> Dixie, whatever do you suppose is distressing him? Dixie, that's no way to act. Miss Nellie's your old friend. Come on now, get. Get, get, get out. Get. He's just getting long. He's getting old and crotchety. But he'll be all right as soon as he remembers you. Despite Dixie's senility, we're delighted to have you. Yancey, I'll aspire to have you know my cousin, Dean Salisbury. How do you do? Didn't I see you last night in New Orleans? That incident at Madame Francine's. Oh, you were there? Yes. Dean, I thought you said you were tired. <laughs> the fact is, Miss Nellie was travel weary. She thought it might be nice if we stopped over at a hotel and freshen up a bit before we came to Waverly this morning. So I was playing a little poker. Well, Yancey, I didn't want to look like something off a river bottom. Well, next thing you'd be thinking, what did Brother David ever see in her? Never could. Yancey, shall I take my old room? Of course. Obadiah. Sir. And I don't want you to be thinking we're going to stay forever. Cousin Dean has taken me to California. And I just thought it might be like old times to have Christmas at Waverly. It's wonderful. We'd love to have you. Obadiah, will you give Miss Nellie her old room and Mr. Salisbury the guest room? Thank you. Yes, I know. He was the man on the street when Henry Spinner was murdered. So that means he got here long before last night. It's a nice girl like Miss Nellie doing with a man like that. Well, Francie, how nice to see you. Hello, Nancy. I, I can't stay. I've got to get right back to the city. Now, you didn't drive all the way out to Waverly just to tell me that. I found out about the man with the spade cufflinks. I thought you should know. A man by the name of Dean Salisbury? Card shark, thief, riverboat black leg, fast with a pistol, and the pistol is for hire. Mm -hmm. Cousin to my dead brother's wife. Cousin of the devil, never your brother's wife. You know, the Pinkertons can use a memory like yours. They do. 
Let me buy you a drink. No, I'm sorry, Yancy. I have to get back to the club. You sure? Mm-hmm. Be careful. Very careful. Thank you, Francie. Right. Obadiah. Yes, sir. You are sure that this Miss Nellie is the same as Nellie? Why, of course I'm sure. But I can't understand about Dixie. He used to be wild about that girl. Dogs are born honest and they don't change, but something else has changed. And all started yesterday. Mr. Spinner was murdered. Oh, that's a pity. That poor old man. <laughs> Marsh Yancey, remember he gave your daddy the gold pin with the whole Declaration of Independence engraved on his head. Do you remember? On the head of a pin. Yes. That's it. That's it. Dixie! <laughs> Never did have any manners. Come on. No dogs on the tape. Come on. There it is. Three steps, Noah, Oak, front lawn. Sure is. Ain't very heavy, is it? Up to the house. Up to, up to Marsh Ancy's room. Time's running out. Let's get on with it. And don't drink any of this stuff. Dean, you promise me now you're not going to hurt anybody. It's a little late for that. What do you mean? You said you weren't... Shut up. Here he comes. Dixie, you lie down and be quiet. You heard me. I can't imagine what's happened to him. We used to be such good friends. We just isn't used to being home yet. Well, what have we here? Well, since it was Christmas Eve, I thought we might have a little Christmas cheer together before dinner. Lovely idea. Speak a little plainer. Oh, round back. <clears throat> you put quite a, quite a spike. Hurry, get the collar. Where's that Indian? I don't know. I don't know. But get the collar. <laughs> you let him get away. He's not going to get away. You're not going to kill him. He's got $50,000 in gold in that collar. I don't mind missing Christmas, but what happened to New Year's Eve? You mean Dixie? Just grazed his skull. Collar's missing. He'll be all right. Come on, Dixie. Come on. Paul, who told me to bring it up here? You know, I'm beginning to understand old Paul who. It's about time. It's pretty rusty. Hey. Hold it, Derringer. Get back against the wall. Obadiah, too. Tell that Indian one wrong move out of him, and he's a dead Indian. Alithia, get the chest. Alithia? Nellie! There's two of them. They're twins. That will do, Mr. Salisbury. Drop your gun. I came here to tell you everything was all right. 
It is now. I mean, we found Spinner's plate safely locked up. Who is, who was this man? Mr. Salisbury. He hired Finn Whistler to kill Mr. Spinner. And then he hired Tip Tip to kill Dixie. Then he was after the Derringer treasure. And as you can see, he found it. All worthless. No gold at all. It was Confederate money. No treasure at all. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Mr. Colton, would you have your men take care of this? Of course. I'll be back in a minute. You said you were on your way to California. Why were you in a hurry? Sorry we had to meet this way. It's better than that at all. I could have told them that it was all Confederate money. Worthless. No treasure at all. Oh. David's baby mark. It was a treasure after all, wasn't it? Welcome home. Since it's Christmas Day. What's all the shouting about? And why are you all dressed up? There isn't going to be anybody here for Christmas except you, Miss Nelly, and myself. Don't you be too sure. Come on. Come on. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas, Yancy. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Yancy. Merry Christmas, Captain Tom. I hope you left some mistletoe aboard the Sultana. Oh, blast. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Pearl Girl. Merry Christmas, Mr. Derringer. Lavinia Lake. Merry Christmas, John. Merry Christmas, Yancy. It's been a good year. I hope we have many more. Merry Christmas and a married new year. Married new year? Oh, I mean a happy one. Merry Christmas, Bridget. Which means? Merry Christmas in Mandarin. And a Merry Christmas to you, Celestial Lady. Merry Christmas, Yancy. Well, I thought you had a date. I did have, with you. Merry Christmas, Francis. Merry Christmas, Yancey. It's good to be home again. Now it's nice to have somebody in the family back again. Merry Christmas. I'll explain it later to you, Pahu. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Obadiah. Yancey? Thank you. Yancey, a toast. Ladies and gentlemen, a toast. A toast to senior. To the good days that are gone, to the better days to come. <laughs> 